I'm Trent, I'm the animal nutritionist here at the Santa Barbara Zoo, and we are in front of the Ridley Tree Animal Kitchen. This is where we prepare over about 300 diets for our 600 animals every single day. I hope you guys can join me. Let's go inside and take a look. We are now inside the Ridley Tree Animal Kitchen. I'm gonna take a couple minutes and uh, show you around a little bit inside our kitchen. One of the main parts of the diets that we feed to our animals is fresh produce. Inside our fridge, we carry about 30 different types of fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, and we also store all of our diets in there under refrigeration until they need to get fed out to the various animals. Here at the zoo, we also feed a large number of commercially made diets. These diets are very specifically formulated to individual animals. We even have some specialty foods here. This is one of my favorites. This is an insectivore diet. This is actually what we feed to our giant anteaters. Now you might think giant anteaters, why are they eating something so small? And the reason behind that is giant anteaters have no teeth. So the special food that we need to feed them needs to be small enough for them to consume without actually chewing it. Here at the zoo, we actually carry about 40 different types of specially made commercial foods. You can think of these kind of like uh, a dog or a cat food, each one's designed for that specific type of animal. We have foods here for, as I mentioned, the giant anteaters, parrots, toucans, uh, all the different primate species here at the zoo, so we carry a lot of those commercial made diets. We also have a number of live insects that we feed here at the zoo. Some, for example, are the super worms, which actually are not worms, but they are beetle larvae. And we also have our mealworms. Again, it's actually not a worm, but it's a type of um, beetle larva. These are one of the main staples that we feed to most of our amphibians and reptiles. And these are the only types of animals that we feed out alive. And the reason for that is the reptiles and amphibians that feed on them, they respond to the movement of that live insect. Um, here in the zoo, we also feed out a large amount of fish. I don't have any fish here on display at this time, but we actually feed out about six tons of seafood every year. Most of that goes to our penguins, and all that seafood is actually sustainably caught. We want to make sure that the fish that we are um, using for our animals here at the zoo is sustainably caught out in the wild, and we are making sure that it is not destroying the habitat or the wild populations of those fish. Uh, here at the zoo, we also feed out um, whole prey, which can range from mice, rats, and rabbits. Those will go towards our carnivores, like our big cats, a lot of our uh, reptiles, including snakes, and of course our California condors and other vultures. These animals all come to us frozen, and we thaw them and then feed them out to our animals. Occasionally you might see uh, some of our animals consuming those out on exhibit as well. Here at the zoo, it usually takes about two people all day to make enough diets to feed our 600 animals. On average, we make about 300 diets every single day. And you might think to yourself, we have 600 animals, why are we not making more than 600 diets? You need to remember that not every animal here at the zoo eats every single day. Some animals only eat once a day, some actually eat two, three times a day, like you and I. And some of the animals, like Mary Lou or Alligator, she might only eat once a week or once every other week, which is completely natural for um, an American Alligator um, and those types of species. Here behind me is where we prepare our mammal diets. Uh, we keep all of our diets separate to avoid any sort of cross-contamination between cooked food, non-cooked food, raw food, seafood, things like that. Um, and we also actually compost all of our unused animal food here at the zoo. And so that would include portions of food that the animals might not consume or things that are not consumable for the animals, like a lot of the uh, peels, apple core, seeds like that. And all of that will get composted through the city and then turned into mulch, which people can actually buy at the local stores. Well, thank you for joining me on our tour of our Ridley Tree Animal Kitchen today, and hopefully we'll be able to see you next time you're here at the zoo through our observation window through our DP hallway.